Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? Hey, you. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking to you. Are you looking for the best way to promote your podcast? It's easy. Just advertise your podcast to your ideal target audience. That's right. Listeners of similar podcasts. Podbean has the best and most cost-effective options for you. Just go to the website, sponsorship.podbean.com slash STR. That's right. Your friends here at Scout Team Radio are hooking you up. Go to sponsorship.podbean.com slash STR, and you will get the best deals to get your podcast rolling. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy Scout Team Radio. Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You straight gangsters over straight here, Straight gangsters. Ah. Uh. Uh. Good morning and welcome back. That is right. You are listening to Scout Team Radio. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, right here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. I am your favorite host and a co-host. You call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. And your other host, who is not your favorite because I'm your favorite. Yeah, that's right. You know him as... America, America. No, I'm here. I was just giving a dramatic pause because I was thinking about retiring. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy, Chris America, coming to you live this Monday here on 12OunceSportsRadio.com. Loudbeard contemplated retiring there for a minute, but then I decided... I don't have millions of dollars stowed away just yet from this job, so I got to keep going. That uh, makes sense. I mean, it would be the most millennial thing ever if you went ahead and just retired on me. <laughs> it would be the most millennial thing ever if I retired early, um, because it's not like a Gen X or like Barry Sanders ever retired early or anything like that. No, yeah, no, no. Nobody else would do that. It would just be. Millennials. You. Yeah, millennials. Uh, Crazy gosh millennials. darn those millennials. See, Loudbeard, you and I, we're what's called zennials, right? We're that in yeah, between. We're, we're yep. between Gen X and millennials, so they call us zennials. And uh, we're old enough to remember all the crap that the Gen Xers did. So when we hear them complain about stuff the millennials are doing, I sit there and I'm like, mm, pretty sure you guys were doing the same. Yeah, they absolutely were. And uh, we're, we're referencing also this... Uh, Doug Gottlieb tweet, tweet that came out. He says, uh, retiring because rehabbing is too hard is the most millennial thing to do ever. Uh, yeah, this one's getting some heat, isn't it? Yeah, Doug Gottlieb's garbage. It's why I don't listen to national sports talk radio shows anymore. It's nothing but these baby boomers like, um, who am I thinking of? It's Colin, Colin Cowherd, Coward. baby boomer. Yeah, sure. Baby boomers. And then the Gen Xers that came up underneath them, like Doug Gottlieb, he's always on Colin Cowherd's show. All they do is just, old man, I want to complain about millennials. Yeah, it, it gets to be garbage. Now, I will say, there's one guy that came to our rescue. It is an unlikely savior, if you will, because I have given this guy a lot of heat, and I typically dislike this guy. But Troy Aikman, he's uh, gained a brownie point or two after... Fire him back on Twitter. He says, that's total BS, Doug. What qualities you or what qualifies you to decide how someone should live their life? So you're now the authority on what motivates Andrew Luck. And if his decisions don't fit into what you think is best for him, then you rip him. Guess that keeps you employed at FS1. Nice. There you go, Troy. Which is also kind of crazy because they both work for Fox. And so ripping another host, not only just ripping him, but saying, I guess that basically keeps you employed at the employer we both work at. That's like co-worker jabs. Imagine a co-worker of yours 
one is just way more famous, way more known at your job, mo- more popular. They they get they get paid way more than you, Loudbeard, coming in complaining about something you said and saying, "I guess this is what keeps you employed at our job here that we work for." Yeah, it, it's pretty pretty serious business there, and I'm surprised that Troy went out on that limb and and called out FS1. Just saying, oh, that's why this guy stays employed there. I mean, that's yeah, in a way, he's kind of shocking. Also, he's also taking a shot at Fox for employing him. Like, I guess this is what FS1 finds entertaining to keep you employed. I guess it's free publicity, though, so maybe Fox doesn't mind so much. And oh, Troy no, yeah, Aikman, they like this kind of stuff. He doesn't care. You know what? He'd be... He'd be fine if he wrote no, off the sunset. No, he's done broadcast and... completely hungover, so clearly he doesn't care. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he doesn't care what he says when he's out there. If he's announcing a, a Cowboys game, he can be completely biased the entire game, and no one no one ever says anything. So, I mean, yeah, Troy Aikman, he'll, he doesn't care. He's going to do and say whatever he wants. But in this instance, he was the man. He fired back and said exactly the right thing to say. Hits it out of the park every time. Um, also, from uh, from that tweet, hold on, let me bring it back up. Because there was he, Troy Aikman wasn't the only one to uh, to thrash him. Tory Smith, I don't have it up, but it was something to the effect of, "Well, I guess you stole credit cards because working was too hard." I don't know if you know that story, Loudbeard, but he was um, arrested charged and pled guilty for credit card fraud or stealing credit cards, something along those lines his freshman year at Notre Dame, and he was cut from the team. Yep. That's uh, that's not the type of guy you want out there being your, your radio host that you trust, saying stupid things about Andrew Luck. That's not the guy you want to be doing that. No. Now, um, I have a, a question that was posed here on Twitter. It says, has Loudbeard ever said to Chris America, I guess that keeps you employed here? Yeah, I've said that all the time. <laughs> I, I do. I do. I say, uh, yeah, uh, Chris America, that's what keeps you employed here. I'm trying to think of an example. I can't come up with one. I think Maybe a lot of some... times you're more like, I don't know why I work with this guy. Yeah, pretty much. I'm, I'm basically Troy Aikman and you're Doug Gottlieb. I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh, he said something stupid again. Oh, my gosh. I guess that's why you're employed here, Chris America. Um, it's your dashing good looks. That's why. That's it. My dashing good looks for radio. Um, now, you said it, that this tweet gave brownie points to a guy you don't like, like Troy Aikman. This tweet right here gave me some brownie points or gave this person brownie points to somebody I don't like. Do you remember Britt McHenry, Loudbeard? Yes. The um, I'm going to parade a tow yard or it was like a parking lot attendant where she was just like saying, this is why you work here. This is why you're never going to make it in life. Pretty much a trashy human being to say when you're rich and beautiful to another human being who's just trying to do their job, right? I, I agree with that. Yes, that was yeah, a bad so, look. But she comes in and she responds to the Doug Gottlieb tweet with, with all the pro football you've played, I can see where you're coming from, dot, 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 dot. Yeah. I, he was and asking for trouble with this one, man. He was. This- and that's that's I think that was the the best point because here you are, a guy who is – did nothing in basketball, really. You had a okay college career, I guess. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Memphis Spence. He's tweeting in today. Maybe he can tell us about Doug Gottlieb's prowess on the basketball court. But I know he once he went from college basketball, he did a couple of tours in like Israel and Greece and all that other stuff, and really was just a nobody. And you, as a basketball player, which isn't that physically demanding of a sport compared to football, you're gonna hate on a guy who's retiring because he wants his body to heal and is just tired of rehabbing his body from getting into car accidents basically multiple times a game. I don't to me that's just even makes it even worse when a basketball player is going to complain about a football player retiring over injuries. Yeah, I think you're I think you're missing the bigger part, p- point of all this. It's he's clickbait. He purposely says stupid stuff a la Colin Cowherd, you know, the whole national media, oh, as long as we say stupid stuff and then people react to it, as long as we're getting reactions, that means we're doing our job. I mean, that is disgusting. Being in this business, I mean, you and I, 
we're sitting here every morning coming on. We, we try to tell people things that are real. We don't try to make up all this, hey, let me just say something that's shocking. I'm a DJ. I'm a shock jock from the, the 80s. I'm going to say whatever I want. And that way people get all up in arms and that makes me popular. Like, come on, Doug Gottlieb. I, this is the dumbest tweet I've ever seen. And that's why everybody jumped all over him. Yeah. And I'm hoping the clickbait stuff ends because more and more I see our generation leaving ESPN, leaving Fox. They're not listening to, they're not watching ESPN as much as we used to. The millennials aren't going to listen to it because why do I want to sit here and listen to you trash my generation over and over and over again when I can watch Hulu, Netflix, or whatever else I want to watch? And then digging the fact that Doug Gottlieb's show is so unlistenable. It is boring. He rambles on a lot. He says stuff like this all the time. I, I've tried listening to it a few times. I get stuck on it when you're at work, you know, and you can't really get to the radio to change it, so you have to listen to the next show. I've done that a few times coming off of Rich Eisen. And it's just miserable to listen to. And I'm like, who clicks on this and then goes to a show and says, all right, this is where I'm going to stay? It's awful. But, and you mentioned Rich Eisen. He's the opposite, right? Like, he's a guy that you can relate to. He doesn't say outlandish things. He just is entertaining. Like, you don't have to be the Colin Cowherd or Doug Gottlieb to be successful. Rich Eisen's a guy that does it right. the right way, man. I I think that's a great yeah. – like, you're saying that like you'll listen to Rich Eisen because he is listenable. But when it gets to Doug Gottlieb, Gottlieb you're all of a sudden like, oh, man, i got to change the station. It's because right. of, of that crap that gets spewed out of their mouth. And when – and when Eisen critiques, like, it's not like Eisen doesn't critique people or come at people hard. He does from time to time. But you know that he spent a lot of time thinking about it, weighing his options, looking at all aspects of his argument, and then coming in with it. Where guys like Gottlieb and Colin are just like, oh, let me just throw this against the wall and see what happens. Yeah. It's it's disgusting. Um, now, I, I do think we may have buried the lead with this story. We, we went on about how much of a jerk Doug, Got Doug Gottlieb is. Uh, we didn't even talk about Andrew Luck retiring, which is the reason why this tweet even got sent out in the first place. Well, we're saving the best for last. And, um, <laughs> well, let me first, before we go on to that, Doug Gottlieb's not the only person who complained about his retirement, Loudbeard. Oh, yeah? Who else you got? Uh, all of the Indianapolis Colts fans who were at the game that night, which, one, kind of weird that the story broke in the middle of a preseason game while he's on the sideline in street clothes. And then two, why are you going to send off your quarterback who basically took the Peyton Manning baton and did about as good as anybody could filling those shoes of Peyton Manning and you're going to boo him off the field because he's retiring when you don't want him to? I mean, I get it's bad timing, Loudbeard, but fans have got to be better. Yeah, it, it, it's a tough situation. Um, and in a preseason game, I guess... The only argument I would make is that there's really nothing else to do because it's not like you're watching entertaining football. So you might as well entertain yourself by booing somebody. And I've sat in the stands in a situation similar to this where I'm at a UCF game and during the middle of the game they announced that Scott Frost had committed to Nebraska. And it's kind of a tough feeling. I mean, but UCF fans didn't boo at that time. I didn't boo Scott Frost, but we were winning. It was an important game. It was, it was a, a crazy moment. But I hate, absolutely hate, when these news stories break at that, with that timing. That was intentional timing. Andrew Luck did not want that to come out while he was out on the field during that preseason game. Somehow, the ESPNs of the world decided to make that a thing and decided that, okay, let's go ahead and break it during the middle of the game, during the middle of the UF Miami game, which a lot of America was watching because if you're like me and like you – you wanted to watch some football, some real football, some meaningful football, and all of a sudden it keeps popping up. Andrew Luck's retiring, Adam Schefter reporting, blah, 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 blah. What is up with that? I don't know. I'm getting on my soapbox now. Yeah, that's the I got to get it out there first mentality, right? Oh, yeah. Clickbait. We got to be first. You got to hear it from us. We're the best. So much better than everybody else. Screw FS1. That's why ESPN did that. And kudos to UCF fans not booing, because I do feel like I don't think either option you should boo, but booing a coach who just took a job 
you know, after he said so many times, like, oh, I'm not probably not going to take it. I love these guys too much. That's a reason to boo. But booing a guy because he's just, man, my body's beat up. I've given it all I had to this to this league, to this team. I got I to gotta step aside. I got to do what's best for me. Booing that guy, I don't know, seems, seems dirty to me. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, now, something the Colts organization is doing, which I think is interesting in this whole scenario, is that they're not going to force Andrew Luck to repay uh, the $24.8 million that is owed back to Indianapolis or could be owed back to Indianapolis because the way his signing bonus was, if you prorated it over the next two years, I guess, that were left on his contract, it would have been $24.8 million, and Indianapolis would have had their right to go and get that money back. But they've decided not to recoup that money. Now, this is my thought on it, and I, I saw something out there that Jim Ursay is leaving the door open for Andrew Luck in case he decides to return from retirement. My thought is, is if you're Indianapolis and you just say, let's give this guy a year, let's see if he's interested in coming back, he then is going to be welcomed in that organization, and he's going to feel like he wants to be there, that it's still his family. So there is a possibility that he comes back because he is still young enough. But this is just odd timing on this news because the guy's only 29 years old, and he just came off a pretty good season. Yeah, but I remember you talked about him facing more injuries at the beginning of, of August, right? Or at I least did. towards the middle. And... I'm telling you, man, it wears on you. Rehabbing is not easy. I've never really had to rehab before, but I know people who have. And it's more strenuous than working out and staying in shape. I got to tell you that much. I've witnessed it before, watching somebody rehab a knee, and I just would never want to do it. Like What your boy Mackenzie Milton is doing to get back on the field has got to be excruciatingly painful and and difficult to do. And the mentality it takes to push yourself there, man, I don't – I mean, that's what Doug Gottlieb's saying is that rehabbing is too hard. Sometimes it is. And when you put the money in the bank and you have the rest of your life ahead of you and you sit there and you think, man, if I continue to go out there and continue to get beat up like this, maybe I play five more years. Maybe I play ten more years. And then I got to live the next 40 to 50 years with all these aches and pains that I see all of the retired guys that come around the Indianapolis Colts locker room all the time. I see how they limp. I see how they pop pills to keep themselves going. I don't want that to be my life. And that's pretty much what Barry Sanders said. Again, a Gen Xer who retired early, not because he was tired of rehabbing, but because he just saw the wear and tear on the older guys. He saw the wear and tear on his own body and said, let me get out while the getting's good. Yeah, it makes absolute sense when you put it that way. And it almost makes too much sense. I think we've gotten a little too comfortable with this whole gladiator mentality. We think of, oh, uh, Ronnie Lott cut off his finger in the middle of a game so he can finish the game off. That's the mentality you have to have. If you're a football player, you just you play as long as you possibly can. Yeah, I get it. I, I understand that that's kind of the, the thought and how football players have been perceived. But, I mean, realistically... If you are getting beat up that bad and you are injured at a year in and year out and you have serious injuries, the guy had bad injuries, you know, back injuries and, and all kinds of shoulder and elbow and just everything you can think of Andrew Luck has had. He, he definitely has the rest of his life ahead of him. And if it's just not meant to be, it's just not meant to be. And he is. He's financially set. And I think your mentality, you lose that edge. When you have all these injuries, you lose that because you're more thinking about the injuries and less thinking about that competitiveness that you need to be a top tier quarterback in the NFL. So, yeah, Andrew Luck probably said, you know what? I just can't do it anymore. I need a break. And, you know, maybe he comes back. Maybe he does not And if he doesn't, you know what? Good for him. Either way, he had a, a successful yeah. career and he was a, a great guy on the field and off the field. I don't think there's anything the Colts should be booing at. For this guy. And you know, the Colts are lucky he didn't do this in 2014 where they would have been stuck with Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota. Now they're stuck with, hey, if we tank this season, we can get Tua. That's right. Or if we want, we can tank two seasons. And um, is it Trevor Lawrence? Is that the kid out at Clemson? Yes, it is. Yeah. So 
he set them up with two really good college football prospects out there, kind of like Peyton Manning set them up with a guy named Andrew Luck. Yeah, and uh, I think the Colts fans are spoiled. I really do. I think they are spoiled because they had so many great years with Peyton Manning. Yeah. And then they, they transferred right over to Andrew Luck, mm-hmm. and he came out right off the gate, and he he looked like he was going to be you know the next Peyton Manning. And now that he's had some injuries and missed a, a season, what, two years ago, and now he's yeah. retiring early, they're kind of thinking, this isn't what we bargained for. Guess what, guys? This is what the rest of the NFL deals with all the time. Not everybody's like a New England or an Indianapolis where you get a Peyton Manning or a Tom Brady or a guy that's going to be there forever. You don't always get that. And guess what? Right. When you don't, that's life, man. It's not always going to be perfect. So stop booing this dude. Respect him and appreciate him for exactly what he was. And that was a great player and a great guy. And again, Loudbeard, were those Zennials who are old enough to remember things that was going on when the Gen Xers were in charge or when the Baby Boomers are in charge? We remember what those Indianapolis Colts teams were like before Peyton Manning. They were caught awful. And it's been a long, what, 20, 25 years? What did they get him in 97? So it's been a long 22 years that the Colts have had um, th- that kind of success. Because when you think you said the Patriots, not everybody can be the Patriots. The Colts were almost the Patriots, right? Yeah. If the Patriots didn't exist. The Colts could have been that team winning five or six championships in the last you know, 15, 20 years. But because the Patriots were always that thorn in their side, they won two championships and went to a couple more and lost. But um, we remember what the Colts were like before Peyton Manning, and it was not a good team. Oh, absolutely That's... not. And I think Is... of... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So I think of Jim Harbaugh. And, you... and a lot of people think of him, oh, he was the guy that brought the 49ers to the Super Bowl. As a coach, and he was the guy that is now at University of Michigan turning the program around, bringing it back to relevance. But he was um, just a mediocre to average quarterback that played on the Indianapolis Colts yep. and brought them just a little bit of success here and there, but mostly mediocre to below average seasons year in and year out. That's what I remember the Indianapolis Colts as being before Peyton Manning. It was that team. And they had some really down seasons. And, yeah, you're right. They, they're spoiled, and they've dealt with that for quite a while. But now, you're right. Is it the race for Tua? Is it the race for Trevor Lawrence? Uh, it's a good question. But they're going to have some competition, Chris America. It's not going to be just them searching for these quarterbacks. The Miami Dolphins. I'm going to ask you this question. If your team comes out and says, we're willing to trade our veterans, and it's still just preseason, does that mean your team has already given up? Because that's what the Miami Dolphins are doing. They're putting all their veterans out on the chopping block, and we're only in the week four of the preseason. Yeah, that definitely sounds like tank mode to me. You offload your veterans? Oof. Yeah. Man, um, so if Miami Dolphins are having a fire sale, that should be fun to watch, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's going to be an absolute disaster, and I like it. And here, here's the other part. If Ryan Fitzpatrick's your starting quarterback going into this season, do you, I mean, like, you're already in, in a difficult position because Josh Rosen can't win the job. You're, you've just you've lost everything. Like, what does Miami have to hang their hat on at this point? Yeah, Kenyon but Drake? Miami knows if they keep the team they have, they're going to go 6-10 and 10 or 8-8 eight and eight again. Because that's what Miami's good at doing, right? That 6-10 and 10 to 8-8 eight and eight window. Yeah. And that doesn't get you a good quarterback draft pick in the NFL. Now, maybe they're trying to get the real good draft pick. That's what they're, they're like, we, we got to be worse than what we were before. We can't be 6-10. Yeah. to 10, or six and ten, or eight and eight. We gotta, we gotta be four and twelve. We gotta be three and thirteen. That's what they need to make it work. Now we've got some hot tweets coming in, Chris America. Yep. Um, one going back to our previous topic. Jenny of Ohio said, uh, "Scout Team Radio, we should put Gottlieb Show and Alexi Lawless in a room together so they can tweet at each other for you know dumb tweets back and forth." Yeah, Alexi Lawless is another guy. Come on, get out of here, man. Get out of here with all of that. Now. 
She's also bringing up, this is a great sports topic, Jim Harbaugh is that guy who brought the 49ers to the Super Bowl and lost to who? Was it the brother? Oh, that's right. She is a big Ravens fan, Chris she America. She is. Mm-hmm. She likes it when we bring up the fact that the Ravens won the Super Bowl with John Harbaugh, not Jim Harbaugh of the terrible Indianapolis Colts. John Harbaugh wins it of the Baltimore Ravens. And, yeah, so we'll bring that up. We'll bring that up. There you go, Jenny. That was just for you. And then Nothing Memphis Benz, he he's a Colts fan, Ladbert. I don't know if you know this. I actually did not know that. Yeah. I, I It's hard to pick out who he's a fan of because sometimes I feel like he's a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He claims to be a fan of Pittsburgh Steelers, but then he knows and he follows and he complains a lot about the Indianapolis Colts, which I don't know if that's him covering them or he's showing that he's got some true fanhood in there and showing off his fan misery. But he says, imagine only winning one Super Bowl between Peyton Manning and and Andrew Luck's Andrew Luck Colts GMs have been horrendous. Yeah, we know how horrendous Colts GMs are because one of them kicked the scout team out of a press box before. Yeah, that's putting it <laughs> putting it lightly, man. When Bill Polian kicked us out of the press box, I, I was done. That was it. I knew Indianapolis was in for some bad years ahead. Some bad. Of him. Mo- mo- yeah, so that's this is karma, right? This is oh, karma for time. kicking out the scout team. Love it. Absolutely. Now, uh, but yeah, one Super Bowl between Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck. That is pretty bad when you put it that way. It is. It's all you got. But those Patriots, you look back at most of those playoff runs where the Colts fell short. The last time the Colts were in the playoffs, I believe, was before Andrew Luck went down with that shoulder injury, was the Deflate Gate game. And the Patriots just routed that Andrew Luck team. Yeah. With that or without tough one. deflated footballs. Oh, man. The deflated footballs, that's meaningless at this point. Patriots are just that good. It sucks. They are. I hate admitting to that. Um, yep. Now, Peyton, Peyton Manning did take them to a second Super Bowl. So they went to one, or they won one, and they went to two. Um, and they went, were in the playoffs, what, 12 years in a row, 10 years in a row? I mean, they were every season in the playoffs. I mean, as a fan, you take that, right? Like, you want your team at least in the tournament every year. You just, yeah. oh, you'd like sure. to see a few more wins out of that. Only one Super Bowl. So, the Peyton Manning era, it wasn't the worst. Um, it was definitely a great time. It just, it, it seemed like it was missing a couple of those Super Bowls. And I'm sure it or hurt a little bit when he went over to Denver and won a couple Super Bowls. And now, looking back, I guess I'm going to ask this question. I just, just thought of it because that's what I do. If you look back and you see that Andrew Luck's retiring early, he's had all these injury problems, would you still make that move as a Colts GM to release Peyton Manning to to draft Andrew Luck? Would you still do it if you had a crystal ball to look to the future to see where both teams ended up? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think the Colts had the team to do what the Broncos did. Um, They might have gone to the Super Bowl with, I don't know if they would have gone to the Super Bowl when the Broncos went to the Super Bowl in 2014. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that, I don't think the same thing would have happened. I just look at that Broncos defense and that's what really carried them. And you look at that Super Bowl against the Seahawks and they were just, they just throttled the Broncos. And I think that's the same year that, the um, Broncos, or sorry, that the Colts got throttled by the Patriots. So if the Patriots got throttled, or the Colts got throttled by the Patriots, and the Broncos got throttled by Seattle, like one of those two teams would have still throttled Peyton Manning, and they wouldn't have won the Super Bowl. And then the Colts' defense in 2016 was nowhere near, or 2015 was nowhere near as good as the Broncos' defense, and that's what really won them that second Super Bowl. Yeah, but when Peyton Manning w- took them to that Seahawks Super Bowl, that he had a pretty magical season. He had a no, couple did, really yeah. good seasons. So the Colts probably could have got two to three more good seasons out of Peyton Manning. And I don't I know. I just don't know that the Colts would have done much better against the Seattle Seahawks. I don't know if that Colts ro- roster with Peyton Manning would have done much better against the Seahawks than the Broncos did. All right, that, Seahawks team, was, that Seahawks team was just so good. They were. They were, and they were destined to win it. 
Now, Jenny of Ohio, she brings up a very good point. Um, remember that time that Denver was on their way to the Super Bowl, but the Ravens knocked them out en route on the Mile High Miracle? Yeah, the, the Pey uh, Peyton Manning Broncos should have gone to that Super Bowl, but the Ravens, man, they, they took it to them. Yeah, that, that was one... his first year back, right? Yep, that was his first year back. And remember, it was that really awful defensive play mm -hmm. that led to that. Yeah, that whatever that rookie was that was a safety that completely blew his coverage. Yeah. It's Jenny of Ohio in. is all over that Ravens 2013 Super Bowl. She knows who they beat, what – like, she she's right now doing the seven ways to Kevin Bacon, and I'm loving it. The seven ways to the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, I, I love it too. You know what? I'm going to say it. I, I'm just going to put it out there just to encourage uh, Jenny to continue to listen because we're big Ravens fans here now just for her. Uh, I, I did my first fantasy football draft last night, and I'm not going to get too deep into it. I, I know that gets boring, but I picked um, a quarterback and then a backup quarterback, right? That's like something you do with these yep. fantasy football drafts. My quarterback was inspired by you, Chris America. I said, this okay. year I'm not going to miss out. I drafted me some Patrick Mahomes. There you go. And as a backup quarterback, there's lightning in a bottle over in Baltimore. I knew I had to take a, a chance, take a flyer on the young Lamar Jackson because he could have quite the electric year. So for you, Jenny of Ohio, my backup quarterback, I thought about you, and I said I better go Lamar Jackson because there's good things happening in Baltimore. So on that note, I hope both of you are happy now. Well, Loudbeard, now that you bring it up, I have, I have one question and a tease for an O.J. Simpson tweet. Uh, one of my question is, and e even Memphis Spence and Jenny of Ohio and anybody else listening, you can jump in on Twitter, at Scout Team Radio. During Peyton Manning's entire career, who had who had it better, Ravens fans or Colts fans? And then there is a tweet from OJ Simpson that you reminded me of because you brought up fantasy football, and I can't wait to, to play this video. It's his best OJ Simpson tweet yet. <laughs> hey, Kawhi, what are you laughing at, man? This isn't funny. Fantasy sports reimagined. FanDuel, that's what I'm talking about. It is more than just fantasy sports. It's the best way to watch the games, win real cash, and bring the action right to your living room. Just choose a contest, make your picks, watch, and win. And if you go to FanDuel.com slash STR today, you can get a $5 deposit bonus. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash STR. <laughs> Come on, man. This is not a laughing matter. If you've been listening to Scout Team Radio for a long time, you know that myself, Loudbeard, has placed a bet or two in his day. That's right, I've lost the beard bet, I lost the romper bet, but one place I don't like losing is when I bet money, and I can easily do that at MyBookie. That's right, you can go to MyBookie.ag, use promo code 12OZSPORTS, and get a 100% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Hey, guess what? That is a lot of money. Do it. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. <sighs> 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Hey everybody, it's your favorite Patriot, Chris America, and I want you to listen every single weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and on replays from 11 a.m. to noon of Scout Team Sports. Listen, George Washington did not cross over the ocean blue in 1492 to defeat the Nazis, so you can listen to the same tired national clickbait sports stories. So once again, tune in to us every single morning, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., and then we replay from 11 to noon. I will see you there, and God bless America.
Welcome back, and thank you again, everybody out there listening. We appreciate you. We are Scout Team Radio. He is Chris America. I am Loud Beer. We bring it to you hot and live each and every morning, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m., right here on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. We also simulcast on the Full Press Radio Network, and we want to thank Canada. That's right, our affiliate up in Canada, the Barn Burner Network. They're hooking us up and putting us all out everywhere in Canada. We appreciate that. So God bless America. God bless Canada. Thank you, listeners. Also, if you cannot catch us live all the time, that is okay. You can always hit us up on the podcast. You can download the podcast anywhere you find podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Google Play, anywhere you find podcasts. Just search Scout Team Radio, and you'll be able to find our daily show downloaded as a podcast each and every day. It's awesome. Lastly, I, I want to make sure all of you are getting interactive. We've got Memphis Spence and Jenny of Ohio both getting uh, tweeting at us at Scout Team Radio. We want to make sure all of our listeners get it interactive. Hit us up on Twitter at Scout Team Radio. And without further ado, I'm, I'm quite intrigued. You teased before the break, Chris America, you teased that this could possibly be the best O.J. Simpson tweet ever. I'm curious of what this means because I haven't seen this. I haven't seen it. I need you to let me know what is it that we're going to be expecting out of O.J. Simpson. Yeah, let me give, give me a second to um, let me give me a second to uh, set it up. Nope, but, uh, absolutely why, not. Why no, I these? need instant gratification. We, That's how we, we live. Yeah. We're, I'm a millennial. We do have Memphis Spence saying, this Steelers fan in me won't allow me to admit that the Ravens had it better than the Colts. Hmm. So what did you think of that question, Loudbeard? Who had it better? So, Peyton Manning was drafted in 1997? Mm-hmm. Or at least that was... or No, it was 98, because his last year playing college was 97. Yeah, and Brady was 99. So, Brady was the year after. Yep, that so sounds right. So, from 98 to, to 99, that's a 21-year span. Who had it better? Did the Ravens do it better, or did the Colts do it better? Both teams were always in and out of the playoffs. Both teams had various levels of success. One team won two Super Bowls. Granted, they were about 13 years apart, I believe. And the other went to two Super Bowls within a five-year span. Won one, lost the other two, Drew Brees. So, Loudbeard, who do you think Who do you think had it better? Which GM did a better job? Um, well, I think the, as far as GM's doing a better job, I would give the Ravens GM more credit than what the Colts GM did because I think the Colts had it better because they had Peyton Manning, who... At that time, I thought was going to be the best quarterback of all time. Like, he was the GOAT to me before Tom Brady really kind of took control of that. So when you have a guy that is potentially the GOAT and you just struggle to put a team around him, you still are good. You make the playoffs year in and year out. You have sustained success, so that's a good thing. But winning two Super Bowls is always going to be better. Yeah, for sure. Um but you're right about the GM doing a better job because there was no Peyton Manning on that Ravens team. They've never had that shock and awe, like, wow, that's a really great quarterback. Whoa, You got whoa, there. Whoa. You mean Trent Dilfer and Joe Flacco aren't <laughs> Peyton Manning-like quarterbacks? Are you kidding no, me? No. Not, what? Not, not quite. Not quite. Uh oh! Now we're getting a goat comment from Jenny of Ohio. Ozzie Newsom is the goat of GMs. Who's there a better GM? Who's a better GM? That's right, Ozzie Newsom. I, I'll give you that. If you can win a Super Bowl with Trent Dilfer and Joe Flacco, you've really pulled the the wool over the eyes of, of the rest of the NFL because, you know what you're doing. I mean, those teams with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. I mean, those were some fun teams to watch, man. Ozzie Newsom never kicked us out of a press box either. Yeah, he's a good guy. Just because are you ready he for this OJ Simpson? Are you ready for this OJ Simpson video? <sighs> I think I'm ready. I'm sitting down. Does that count? That does count. Here we go. Andrew Luck, what did I do to you? You 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 could have retired an hour and a half ago. Before I picked you in my fantasy picks. I mean, what do I do, Vic? I've been a fan of yours. Why would you do this to me? Come out of retirement. I'm just saying. <laughs> I love so that. OJ Simpson just drafted 
Andrew Luck on his fantasy team, and then Andrew Luck, or sorry, yeah, Andrew Luck announces his retirement. If you're Andrew Luck, are you worried that O.J. Simpson is mad at you? Do you come back out of retirement because of that tweet? I mean, O.J. does have a little bit of a history. Um, Andrew Luck, lock your doors at night, my friend, because you have yeah. you have scorned the wrong person. Uh, OJ might bring mm. OJ might bring new meaning to cutting you from his fantasy team. Ooh, yeah. There's gonna, definitely going to be a white Bronco uh, slowly <laughs> driving through the neighborhood at night. <laughs> I'd be a little In careful. Indianapolis. <laughs> In Indianapolis, that's where it happens. Uh, uh, yep, I'd be careful. Uh, so all is, white Broncos are now suspicious white Broncos in Indianapolis at this moment. That this is all true. Uh, yeah, so Andrew Luck, be careful. Um, I can picture O.J. Simpson and really any guy out there because fantasy drafts are starting to pick up. Now, the later that you do them, the better. But some people do them a, week out, a couple weeks out and whatnot. So I'm sure Saturday and Sunday were big-time big fantasy draft days, right? So let's say yeah. you say, okay, Saturday's a great day to have it. Let's go ahead and do it at 3.30, 4 o'clock on a Saturday. This will be great. We draft. You're like, Andrew Luck just came off a great year. He's going to have even a better year this year. You draft him, and then you have ESPN on on the background, and you're getting to round like 10, and you're like, man, I feel really good about my team, especially my quarterback, Andrew Luck. This was a great pick. And all of a sudden on ESPN, that red breaking news, Adam Schefter informed that Andrew Luck is about to retire, and you're, you're ready to throw a, I don't know, uh, your glass. The remote. Of- the yeah, remote your glass something. of vermouth. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, your glass of... Or your can of beer. We'll go simple. A simpletons yeah. we like a can of beer. Well, you were probably enjoying a can of beer, and if you were a Gator fan, you probably already threw your can of beer at the screen before that news broke. Because that's how I saw the news break, Gladbeard, is in the middle of that Gator game. And what... An awful game it was. Miami played like Miami should have played. Uh, a team with a new coach, new quarterback. They played exactly how you would expect them to play with lots of penalties, especially on the offensive line. Their offensive line is going to compete with Florida State's offensive line for being the most trash in college football. I can tell you that much right now, Loudbeard. Florida State, their offensive line was bad last year. Miami's offensive line reminded me a lot of that. And if it wasn't for that trash offensive line and a new coach and a new quarterback, Florida probably would have lost that game because they don't have a new coach, they don't have a new quarterback, and they had a bunch of veterans on defense that committed some of the worst pass interference penalties I've seen at the end of a football game in a very long time, Loudbeard. Um, It's a good thing that neither of these two teams have a game next week and they can take two weeks to kind of look at this game film and plan out for whoever they play, whatever direction of school they're playing in week two. Actually, I think I think Miami draws UNC with Mac Brown coaching. So Florida probably plays like the Citadel or something next. I'd have to check their schedule, but I'm assuming it's a it's a cupcake game. But man, Dan Mullen's got his work cut out for him. Yeah, I, that's the the takeaway, right? That the Gators really disappointed. They underwhelmed. And the Miami Hurricanes were exactly what we thought they were. Now, the Hurricanes were given ample opportunities to win this game. They just couldn't do anything at the end. So I don't know if that's a testament to the Gators' defense because the Gators' defense, the defensive line looked outstanding, and the defense played well. They just made stupid mistakes. The offense, that's where I was a little worried because they have the one play. They First of all, they got pretty good with four fourth down conversions if Dan Mullins wasn't so aggressive that one 66 yard play probably would have never happened and the Gators could have lost that but they were able to convert on fourth down four different times which kudos to that offense but they made some bad mistakes and they lacked explosiveness Um, other than Tony I just didn't see a whole lot of real explosiveness P Ryan he looked kind of blah and uh, Felipe Franks made a huge interception a terrible mental error towards the end of the game that really could have lost it for him uh anthony mack the man with the golden mic i don't know if you ever heard of him he's tweeting in at me saying we haven't even played a game yet give me till saturday before you throw out worst offensive line awards look man you guys are defending champs 
I can't just take away your title until somebody takes it away from you. So, like, I'm not going to strip you guys of your belt of worst offensive line until somebody else takes it from you. And all I'm saying is that Miami is a number one contender to challenge you for that belt this year. Uh, or uh, turnover bag. No, nobody, that- nobody's ever going to take that title away from them. They're always going to have turnover bag title. Yes, yes. Uh, instead of putting on, like, a world championship belt, they actually right. just put on a little um, Prada, little uh, pinkish, reddish backpack that looks kind of feminine. Backpack, backpack. It's like backpack, a purse. Backpack. It is a purse. Well, Loudbeard, we talked about throwing your vermouth at your TV after a fantasy draft. We talked about throwing your beer at a TV uh, um, during a Gator game. And now we can talk about Mike Berlon of Craft Brood Sports throwing his Smirnoff ice at his TV during the FC Cincinnati versus Columbus crew. They, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but they redid the bet. They ran the bet back, the fire and ice bet. Uh, for those who weren't listening a couple weeks ago, um, Jenny of Ohio is a big Columbus crew fan. Mike Berlon of Craft Brood Sports is an FC Cincinnati fan. They bet last time these two teams played. They both lost because it's a tie, and nobody wants ties in sports. And so they ran back the bet. Mike Berlon... Um, didn't do so well paying off his bet last time doing the smearing off ice and then a shot of uh, um, of a fireball. He's going to have to do it big time now because Columbus Crew wins 3-1. to one. All right, so I've got a couple comments here. So hell okay. is real. That's what we call this. Hashtag hell is real. Apparently Hashtag there's hell is a, real. A, a billboard in between Columbus and Cincinnati that says hell is real. Uh, second, uh, Mike Berlon just tweeted in. I'm going to see what it says here in just a second. But i I got to defend Mike Berlon. If I had to chug a Smirnoff ice, it would look like crap, too. I'd be spitting it all over the place. I'd be like, that's all you get. I can't do any more. I mean, I get that that's what the bet was, but come on. Can we really give him that much trash and that much crap for not being able to down a Smirnoff ice? I mean, can anybody? Well, one, I hope he does it right this time. He's supposed to take the shot of Fireball and chase it with the the Smirnoff ice. But I guess if I were to have to chug Smirnoff ice, I'd want to chase it with something better like Fireball. Um, so I guess he did do it right th- that way. Um, but yeah, even Fireball came in and said that was pathetic. He can't have Fireball call you out twice in a row. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that one I can... I, if Fireball gets involved, then you know it's a problem. And I will say that Jenny did make it look so eloquent when she did it. Yeah. She did that, it from the knee. She did it the way you're supposed to do the Smirnoff Ice oh, Challenge. You, get, you take a knee, you chug it. That's how we need to see it from Mike Berlon. And you need to do it live on the show. Stop with these Twitter, oh, I'm going to do this after the show's over. No, we need it live on the show so that all of your fans see you guys. So that it gets replayed in infamy on Facebook and on Twitter. Wow, you're really uh, putting a lot of pressure on him. Uh, so Mike Berlon right now, I could see him. He's, he's probably getting ready for work, and he's probably thinking, I need to find a bet for scout teams so I can get them back. So Well, he did Chris tweet America, out that he was, he was hoping he had slept through this discussion. I guess he doesn't tune in until 6.30, so he was hoping that we would have talked about it in the first part of the show. But we had, we had Andrew Luck news and Doug Gottlieb news to talk about before then. Yeah, and there's somebody, I don't know who this is, must be a new new listener, uh, the real man with the golden mic, um, he must be overcompensating for something. Uh, he says something about the FSU bag being in retirement, whatever, that we, we're done talking about that trash. Yeah, and then he's saying that, um, he's saying that there shouldn't be a Smirnoff Ice Challenge. Did he tweet that out? Where did I see that? Is it that, I did he just, I, I, he's tweeting at me. He's tweeting at scout team. I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping track. Okay, that didn't come tweets. to me. I'm just looking at the scout team one. So you might might look at your own. I, I thought I saw a, a, a notification that said there should not be a Smirnoff Ice Challenge. Maybe he deleted it. Maybe I don't he know what that, that's all about. I, yeah. I really don't. doesn't make any sense to me. But if he, if he thinks there shouldn't be a Smirnoff Ice Challenge, I think that should be his next bet. Yeah. Well, all I know is it feels good because football is back, man. That that Gators game, we're talking serious football. We're talking Smirnoff Ice, Fire and Ice Challenges. I mean, this is a great time to be alive. We got some excitement coming up this week. Thursday night, UCF's playing. I'm excited about that. That's my team. They named Brandon Wimbush the actual starter. Uh, I know Mike Berlano will give us some heat on that because he's a big Notre Dame fan and he, he thinks Wimbush is trash. But that's okay. 
I can still live with it. That's my quarterback. I got to ride or die. Yeah, you know, um, I'm looking at the slate of schedule and games. Not a whole lot going on like we usually get so far um, on the Thursday night, Friday night games. You got Wisconsin, USF. Is that is that a big game? I, I'm looking forward to that one. I want to see what USF is. I, I've heard that USF should have kind of a, a bounce back season this year. Um, and let's see what they're, they're made of. That's a big game because Wisconsin should win. So if USF takes it, that means that USF might be back. Uh, Georgia Tech Clemson. Georgia Tech finally getting an offense that's from this century. That should yeah. be interesting to see. Uh, the Lane Kiffins versus the Ohio State Buckeyes. Okay. Uh, that's It'll be interesting, but they don't stand a chance, the Lane Kiffins. Alabama Duke. Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's a game. Oregon versus Auburn. Now that one I'm interested in. Okay. That one I am because Oregon played really good down the stretch last season and I think they've got something this year. I think this is going to be a good year for Oregon. They've shaken off the stink of that former coach of theirs, Willie Taggart, and now they're really starting to hit their stride. So I'm excited to see what Oregon does. Now Auburn, they're, you know, every season they're in the conversation. But they've been kind of lackluster the last couple years. So I actually see Oregon really taking it to Auburn. But anything can happen. First game of the year, you never know what to expect. Yeah, so usually the Labor Day weekend, week one of college football, is a great weekend. It's usually when we have a lot of our big matchups. So far, I've, I've told you all the ones that, that I saw. Very lackluster. So that oregon Auburn your Saturday night game. And since there's no NFL, we get a Sunday night and a Monday night game which are typically really, really good matchups. This year, Houston-Oklahoma, I feel like that will be a fun game to watch. Um, Houston can hang with Oklahoma's offense from time to time. Um, Oklahoma's defense usually isn't that good. So that should be a fun matchup to watch, but is it a sexy matchup, Loudbeard? It's not a sexy matchup, but I think Houston is one of those teams that has super high expectations. So this is a... a put it up game, right? Like you got to show what you're made of. If you want to have these high expectations, you're going up against one of the big dogs. You got to show them what you're made of. So to me, Houston comes out with a lot of tenacity and I, that will make it a fun matchup. And Oklahoma, you get to see what Jalen Hurts is all about, right? Yeah. And then this one, I couldn't care less. Loud beard. Notre Dame versus Louisville. Yeah, I mean, obviously Notre Dame fans are abundant out in the world, including Mike Berlon, who who had to correct me. He said I, he wouldn't say Brandon w Wimbush is trash. He said just disappointing. Okay, I can live with that. Um, but you know, Notre Dame, we get to see them again. Yeah, I'm not excited about that either. Louisville's got nothing though. I don't think Louisville. This should be a blowout for Notre Dame. Yeah, Louisville was highly disappointing after Lamar Jackson left. Um, I don't know that they turn it around much this year. We'll see. Well, the good part is, is Mike Berlon will be going up against Lou the Dog. That means we should be getting a new Lou the Dog, uh, little rap battle thing. Of yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I need one of those. I haven't had one of those in a while. We need you back, Lou. Where you at? Whether he's on Craft Brood Sports or, or whatnot. I, I need a little bit more of that. Whether he tweets it out, wherever it's at. If you guys haven't heard Lou the Dog... Check him out at Lou underscore the dog. Guy is the man. Yeah, he gives us some good raps for uh, game previews of Louisville. Way better than like a Kirk Herb Street pregame show. Uh, yeah, a lot different. A lot different. So than I didn't a Kirk watch. Street. I didn't watch game day, but I saw a lot of people complaining about it. They said it was a big giant Disney commercial. Is that true? Oh, I didn't watch it either. But yeah, yeah, yeah I'm gonna say yes. It was. I've kind of given up on game day. It used to be my favorite pregame show on ESPN. Now they have like 15 different analysts. Um, sadly to say, Lee Corso is hard to watch. It's sad to watch, honestly, because he he was he was Uncle Lou or not Uncle Lou. Sorry, he was a uh, Uncle Lee. Uncle Lee Corso. <sighs> it's gonna be sad to see Lee Corso go. Yeah. But you can tell that that stroke is like wearing on him more and more each year, and uh, yeah, he yeah. seems like he's it's lost a step. Lost a yeah. step. 
Oh, we got an update for Lou. He said, uh, Lou had just welcomed a new pup to the family. Not sure if he'll have time for the new hot fire this season. Ooh, yeah, that's challenging. When you have a new pup, you got to uh, look with listen, less time on your hands. Listen, if Eminem can rap about Haley, then Lou the dog can still rap about his new pup and the Louisville Cardinals. Okay, there you go. Heard it here first from Chris America. He's, he's calling out Lou the dog. I can't believe you did that, Chris America. Yeah, man. Hey, bring it. I can't rap, but I'll, I'll try. Well, this I mean, has been a fantastic... If you see my, if you see my Christmas tree at, at during Christmas, you can tell I can't rap for anything. Okay. On that note, dad joke... <laughs> I, can't, I can't even top that. You can't. You I, can't. Nor would I want to. No. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Monday. Peace. <laughs>